All right, uh, I'd like to call this meeting as a uh, select board to order, this joint meeting. And I'd like to call the joint meeting of the select board and the village trustees to order at 6.32, um, September 10th, 2018. And uh, I guess we start with uh, citizen comments. No, 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 we don't start with citizen comments. I'm looking at the wrong one. Here's the right one. You want me to run the meeting? No. Uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, we're starting off with uh, um, the wrong agenda. Yeah, you can run Yeah, here, here, here. Oh, here we go. Look at the village agenda. Uh, the municipal manager jobs, or no, the public hearing of town plan amendments. That's what we start off with. <laughs> uh, Sally? So I'm here as chairman of the planning commission. Michael Brand is here as well. We have um, two chapters, I believe, that we're presenting tonight. Um, when we revise the town plan, we are required to re-adopt the entire plan. So we have rewritten the energy section to comply with the state enhanced energy plan requirements. Um, but at the same time, we needed to update our capital budgeting um, chapter, which I mean, it's not really a chapter, but that is one requirement that the regional planning commission put upon. So that's one reason why it's included. We anticipate that we will be writing a new education chapter relatively soon, so we're going to have to do this process again. And we're actually, just to let you know right now, we're starting that discussion next week at a planning commission meeting. So if there's anybody here or in the audience out there that wants to be part of a conversation about education on uh, the planning commission meeting will be next Wednesday at 7 30. so going back to the town plan amendments the enhanced energy plan we've been talking about for probably close to two years it was not an easy um, discussion we had a lot of information that is required by the state to um, comply with what they want the main reason for doing it is to update um, the community you know what we want for our community and the main thing is to do is to talk about where we allow renewable energy um, facilities within our community so if you go to page 12 or so those are those are the critical pieces and that's where we can set the locations for where we would like to see enhanced energy or in, um, energy facilities in our community and we have preferred locations, prohibited like locations, and constrained locations. And those just are different levels of review for or whether they're allowed. And so that, to me, that one page is really the most <coughs> critical piece of this entire section. Everything else is updated with current energy usage, you know, projected usages. We have some action items, but um, and for me, that's the most critical piece of what we do. I have a question. I, I thought that was the most important one because this is the action yep. stages. But, but some of them I don't uh, quite understand. For instance, uh, objective 1.2.0. The first one, reduce the mileage driven by town and village vehicles. Now that implies that they're driving now as close as they shouldn't be. How would we reduce that? Would that still be able for them to do their tasks? Well, no, it's, I mean, the objective 1.2 is, is, it's under the objective of reducing the use of non-renewable energy for transportation. So, I mean, one way you can do that is be more efficient. I mean, it's not, it's, it's sort of like, if you can, it's like any logical thing, if you can double up on your tasks and do one instead of coming back and forth to the, I mean, it's, it's, it's Just not a requirement. An example also is Robbie got a bicycle He's right. been using that this during the summer months a little bit here and there, and uh, uh, they try to do that a little bit more. And, you know, as we go on, people should be thinking uh, to, to use less mile, less vehicles, and be able to walk if they're in the village or whatever. Or as Sally said, make one trip or plan out your trip so plan, you're not plan ahead. going yeah. Maybe cut from the west end to the north end to the south end yeah. to the east end, okay. you know, yeah. make it a loop instead. So that's that's what we intend by that. Several years ago, the, um, they established that sand holding place in mm -hmm. South Woodstock yep. so that the trucks that exactly. work out there didn't have yep. to come back to yep. the highway garage yep. to reload every time. 
And so once this, once this chapter is adopted and the, the town plan is adopted, these enhanced energy um, recommendations, they'll be in effect. So for instance, when the Rainbow Play School came forward with their um, array, we had no, we had no say in it. I mean, we could recommend to them that they have some screening and they do certain things, but it has no legal standing. So once this is in place, we will be able to have, legally be able to have some input on projects in this community. <laughs> Even people's personal projects? No, no, this is no, just, no, no. This is just commercial, large. Okay. commercial generation and it's over... 150K? It's 150K. Let me see. I think it's 150K. There's been talk of uh, hiring a regional energy coordinator. Yep. Um, is that, where does that fit into this? You know, that came up just in the last month or so, and so we have been working on this for a long time, and yeah. this, this just was adopted in, in July, so we... The planning commission, so that actually conversation came up after this plan. So I would hope that it would be supported. I, to be honest, I haven't looked to see if there's language in there that would support that. But I yes. hope that you as boards will. Do you, so what's the process with uh, town with this and the different chapters? Um, we typically we would like we ideally would adopt the whole thing at once, but we've discovered over the last few years that it takes a lot of work. So we've been adopting the critical ones as they're needed. And this one, the Enhanced Energy Plan, was a critical piece you know, in terms of being able to respond to projects that we didn't have in place before. And the state really requires you to do this. So and if you want to have any. Right. Then every year the state adds mandates, and that's why we have all the Lucky Strike extras in there, as Phil would say. The forest blocks. And oh, yeah, I forgot about those. Yeah. Right, right, right. The forest blocks, and the, the, those are mandated by the state. And every year they ratchet that up a little more mandate within the town plan that the towns have to do so when you go to adopt it it's not always the same thing as it was five years ago two years ago yeah. and that's why we had to do that same with capital improvements that was another mandatory piece so so but in terms of the process like if we see mistakes in here do we oh yes please you can let us know yes 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 because okay. you're not going to officially adopt it until <laughs> next week's after next week's meeting okay. so you have to have two by both boards, that's why you're doing joint meetings. And right. then the uh, uh, Regional Planning Commission will also have a review of this, and that'll be a, be a month or so down the road in the, where they adopt. Hmm. Alita Wilson has a question. I, I'm just curious, how does that pertain to the public buildings like the town hall? Well, it's in here, it's one of the, <coughs> one of the things they talk about is priorities of, and infrastructure <laughs> and the town hall. Building is one of the ones mentioned both from an energy point of view as well as rehabilitation. And so it's that's a high priority. And it's listed as a high priority. I guess I it's, it's the town hall is not. The town hall oh. rejuvenation is only estimated at 100 to 200,000. And it says finance as part of the annual budget, which isn't really reflecting all our current thinking. Right, that, but that's in the that's in the capital. That's in the tax. That's, that's not yeah. the energy tax. Is, the energy chapter has the energy different higher <coughs> We have a you know, general uh, action 113 is increased energy efficiency of existing town and village owned buildings. So, sure. that would cover this what, facility. What's, I have a question on uh, objective 4.1. The difference between the first and the third one there, one says support the sustainable Woodstock ad hoc energy group. And then it says support and promote initiatives and recommendations from the Sustainable Woodstock Energy Group. So it seems like a duplication of a thought. One is supporting the actual group of people and and their meeting and the keeping it go helping keep it going, and the other one is about initiatives and recommendations. <coughs> Slightly different. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes we don't get it 100 percent right. It's really hard. It's, it's sort of a moving target over the, you know, as especially when it takes two years to write one of these chapters, mm -hmm. things are evolving even as we're doing it. So. Okay. And and when you tell when you say that you want people to uh, that you want to encourage broadband for the whole town to so that people don't physically move to is that because they're they're driving somewhere to get which broadband? Which are you referring to? Um, <coughs> encourage the development of town wide broadband internet connection to provide an alternative to energy consumption physical travel. Yeah, that's a pretty common 
yeah. goal for energy usage. So, so people are literally right now, you think, driving their cars to... Well, not necessarily that, but it's more that if you have good internet in your home, you can do a lot more than having to go find it somewhere. Yes. Yes, there are so people the in this community that are driving it. Right, right. Serena's nodding over there, yes. so yes. There are I'm pretty that. sure that just okay. accessing email is different than actually needing yes. to Skype for business yes. or just something that gives you a better reach out on with more strength. Okay. Right. This may be a stupid question, but um, I was part of getting the energy efficiency incentive grant um, from Efficiency Vermont, which we got some things done, but not all things done. And part of the problem was we bumped into various issues in this building. So I'm just curious, like we can put it on paper that we want to be more energy efficient, but the first the first hurdle is how do we get buildings to be intact enough to make those changes? Um, so I think it's all great on paper, but the reality is we are a long way away. I think it's all, isn't this more of a plan for the, for the future, not just like what we're going to implement the day it's implemented? We're going to try. But well, this it's is the first step to get it process. into the budget, right? I mean, you have to have a plan. You have to have goals in order to well, get to a place. I, with all due respect, I think the plan has to include what upgrades and changes and maintenance needs to happen before you can get to that. So the budget shouldn't just leap ahead to let's all be energy efficient. It's like, get, I, I can only speak to this building. There are many things that need to happen before we move on to energy efficiency. So the, the budget should include bringing the various things that are not working correctly. Um, and then you can move on to, to those great goals, which I totally support. So we, uh, Alicia, we did get a structure, the report from the structural engineers late last night, so we can share that. And actually, and, and we do mention in the in the uh, text of that chapter, you know, about auditing municipally owned buildings and, and trying to determine where, where what we need to do to just even get them to that level. So I think that's covered. And one thing I will remind folks is that when we write um, the town plan, one of the reasons I always say it, it's good to sort of cover some of these things in very general terms is it's also an a way when you're writing grants, so if you can refer back to the town plan and it says you should be having energy efficient buildings, you're going out to look for those grants, you can refer to the town plan and say, this has been adopted by the community and it says we need to be more energy efficient. So, so it's, it's also useful for that purpose as well. So how, do you sh how are you sharing this with the, with the community? Huh? It's online, it's yeah. available, we have text, we have hard copies of this. So I got it, I picked it up on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, Mary, have you read it? How, how do we make people aware that it's here? And well, you can leave a horse in water, of course. Can we put a link on the listserv? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good idea. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. you'd like to yeah. view yeah. the new town plan. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, just set up the link. And then you know that you've done a really good job right there in getting people aware. I mean, I think there's like 5,000 people on that list. Mm -hmm. We have copies in the library and uh, in our offices as well, so it's out there. But we, like, I, I didn't know it was coming up tonight. Oh. Well, you, but you know you've been talking about it. I mean, uh, yeah, I've been involved in writing so. it, but, uh, so, but I didn't know it was coming up for discussion tonight. Well, it is well, it's a, a good idea to put it on the list, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree. Would you carry your hand? Until, uh, until I got my agenda. I didn't get my agenda until Monday. Well, we talked about it at the last meeting, but it this was coming up. This was a warm meeting for that. This, this, was, this was warm quite some This yeah. was a warm meeting. Right, okay. So the, but the general thing is, in the day-to-day -day operation of what I read and what I hear, I didn't see the agenda till Monday. And so I'm saying for the general public who are not here, how do they get to read this? Well, the list server is a great idea. Well, that, so we'll so, uh, I think that's how so we should spend money with the so standard. So so <coughs> yeah. That's why they have two public hearings for this, and mm -hmm. the state saw in a wisdom that people weren't getting the word out. So the first public hearing, people kind of sparked a little interest as yourself, and that'll spread out. And plus, we have the camera here, and there's a lot of people that watch this 
uh, faithfully on uh, Facebook, and uh, we'll pick up on the fact that there's something available in so our office. So you can go online and read it. Yeah, they can go online. It's online. It's at the library, and uh, we can make copies available any anytime somebody wants one. Are there any other questions about the public, the town plan amendments tonight? Tonight. I have one last question. Yes. I would agree with Joe that being a tenant here and not having any of that information, I looked at the agenda and it was like town plan, whatever. I, it, that is, that is, we had a visioning thing last night and transparency in government was one of the things that came up. And it's not that people are trying to hide stuff, but we have got to do a better job okay. of communicating how important these things are. And I will tell you that that town plan has nothing in it that I heard tonight about maintenance. Um, it, it, it is it is something we just we pretend it'll all be la 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 everything will be fine till it's not and this building is at that point till it's not and I think I, 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 I really appeal to all of you that take the time to communicate as broadly and widely about everything so that we don't you've got you know, a select board member that doesn't know what's on the agenda I mean I, I a while back, um, our agendas and everything were put on the listserv. We'll make sure that that can happen again prior to the meeting so people are warned about what's going on. But people have to themselves have to want to pay attention to what's going on. Right, and we should talk about how can we as a community make them. What can, like, what, if I'm empowered with the information, what can I do? I don't, I, I don't think that's possible. It seems like people just come out when, well, when, when it, it affects their well, backyard. So, a board member that doesn't have the information, that is, it says, that is a problem. On the agenda, it says public hearing and town plan amendments. That doesn't say it's the energy chapter. Right. That doesn't get you excited about it, find out about it. All right, so we'll try to do better. We are. Yep, and we'll get it on the listserv, and uh, we'll, it's, it's, it's on the CCTV, and so we're going to get the word out. And, there's a, and next week is another public meeting on the same, exact same topic. So there's just another opportunity. Have some more folks. Lastly, Sally? Yeah, no, I, I would just say going back to what Alita said, is that we have a, a, another chapter in the town plan, which is about community facilities and services. So um, this is specifically about energy that you're reviewing tonight, right. but there is yet another chapter. Again, you're going to find when you look at that, that that's also out of date. So the real problem that we have is that, you know, at the last time we did a, a comprehensive rewrite of this, we actually went out to the community and we did it over the course of a year and we had a lot of involvement. It's just gotten much more complicated that we can't, I don't, I don't see us doing that anytime soon. So this piecemeal one chapter at a time seems to be working. It's a lot of work for you guys because you have to have two public hearings and you know, it's, it's just more work. But I think it also keeps it much more up to date. I agree that there should be more public participation. Uh, and I'd love to sort of establish a, a way to do this and not just piecemeal for one item, but is there a way that we could really let the community know what's going on on a regular basis. So I would suggest warning, so if we know in advance the chapters that we're discussing at these right. public hearings, I would say at least list in detail those chapters, and, and what we're discussing. who's going to be doing that, though? You know, who's, it's sort of like, let's establish a routine. Whoever, whoever, and yeah, so. Is that, is that the. If you're putting it on the agenda, say what chapters you are. Right, I know, but and then, who puts it on the agenda? Lynn was yeah. doing it before. Yeah. Uh, we'll put it on the agenda. So we just need to figure that out. So, Beth, if we could get that on the agenda going forward, and for next week's joint meeting, if you put those chapters on, what that'd be great. Next week's and the next week's meeting what is at uh, five o'clock, and that would be. Well, we we all said tonight, five o'clock, the LCT presentation. Oh. Oh. They just That's announced the that at the beginning of this That's week the at five o'clock. Seventeenth. It's in your packet. It's right here. It tells you all about it. I have it also. It was in the last meeting that really went over all this stuff. The last trustees meeting, yes. which had a joint part of it. It's just yeah. like not remembering we were supposed to meet on Monday, Joe. <laughs> Even I so, have it in my time. Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the point we're going to have to do. 5.30. We'll get that's that that's on the list service. Yeah, I do. Like you do? I have it at 5.30. What time is it? Really? The 17th is at 5. I can't get here by 5. That's the when VLTC is going to be. No, no, no. no. So no. as soon as I can. No, 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 no. Frank is going to. Can we stop for a minute? I don't think that. Shh. Hold on.
VLCT is going to be here on Tuesday, the 15th of October. The <laughs> regular okay, meeting. We're talking at the about regular meeting. September now. Uh, your meeting next week is on the 17th, and the time is. I had a joint meeting in my calendar, and then I asked someone, and they told me it wasn't happening, and so I deleted it. And is it happening? I think it's supposed I to be at 5.30. I have it at 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.
Yes, you can come in on your own and review them. But, uh, they have to be done here at the town hall. But it's the 10 people who are being selected by the two boards who uh, will be uh, winnowing things down. But uh, all, both board members, uh, both members of both boards are welcome to look at their own, their own time. And after. can we do that electronically as well? Because I'll be out of time when that's... I don't done. believe so. Can we do what? Can we electronically read? No. I no. don't think so. Why? Um, Confidentiality. We well, should well, advise that they, they need to stay here. No, I, that was, I believe that was one suggestion, but we can read uh, confidential materials online. We do it every day with our banks, so there must be a way to do it. Yeah, but that's one of them. Because they, they don't want the name to be, their names getting out mm -hmm. somehow. No, so we can number them. But I, I, so I'd ask if we could look at that. So that we can, sorry. Uh, I don't. I don't see the need for that because we are we are able to do to come in the building and look at them and the selection committee is going mm -hmm. to winnow it down and we are all going to be present for the final interview. Um, I physically won't be in town during those dates when you put us up that you put aside so I'm just asking if it can be made available electronically. I have a I have an issue with that because the confidentiality and my experience here is that nothing's confidential anymore. Word gets out, stuff gets around, and if I was applying for the job, I wouldn't want maybe my boss to know. Well, I, I, I would only, it's, I, I would agree you find it different grounds. I just think that we're going through the trouble of having 10 qualified people review all these resumes and winnow them down, and I'm going to trust those 10. And then, and then we all step in for the final choices. If there's a way to do that, but wouldn't it be simple to just, just ask do VLCT if they can do a password protected Dropbox that we can yeah, access? Absolutely. Well, that's very easy. Yeah. That is probably a possibility. Why don't we just ask them if that's, I'm sure, I mean, we it's very simple them. to do. Yeah. But are we as selectmen and or select persons and trustees allowed to, if we review them on our own time, are we allowed to actually put one aside and say, we li I like the look of this one? Comments by writing, she said to the committee. You can, you can, you can make comments too. By writing, like that, I like the look of this person. Yeah, you can, you can write your comments mm -hmm. and present them to the chair. Your. So your let's comments. ask VLCT if they can do that mm -hmm. because I think that would be beneficial I, to everyone. If you want possible. the entire. Well, what we package. don't. Is that? I mean, we're, well, we could be talking like seventy-five or a hundred resumes. Yeah, it's a lot of them. Well, I mean, I'm sure they're all being sent to the search committee electronically to begin with. Uh, as opposed to making a search committee of 10, uh, you're talking about making a search committee of 20. Even if that's the point of Even it. if they're put in the security drop box that you talked about, it's still possible for you to email or comment. No. 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 No, you can set it up to where it's only view. You can. View only. View. Yeah, but you can view it, but you can also say, hey, by the way, in an email, I was at the town hall today and I read, no. you can't. No. I can't send you an email and tell you that I went up to town hall and read a... Not you can't, I can't do that no, no matter what. what. I mean, whether they're here in person yeah. or not, I can't do that. But we have to do that on our honor and we, uh, promise right. confidentiality. Well, no matter if I it's mean, on a Dropbox right. or right in front of me. Right. That's not really pertinent. We'll, we'll have to explain that. Yeah. Alita, you're, you're chomping. I am chomping. Uh, first, I manage, I've hired people and managed people for many years, and it was all done online. Resumes came in, password protected. You look at it. So, okay, it, so you're it, saying it's possible to have It's completely time. possible, but right. I, I just I also want to look at the matter. job description. And I, I guess because I'm the biggest tenant in the town hall, and I wished I had been part of this, um, I look at number two, duties and responsibilities. Ensure the maintenance of all municipal properties, streets, highways, parks, sidewalks, bridges, and culverts. It is not possible for that person, and maybe Frank can speak to this, to do all of that. It is not possible. This building is old, and this is one of many buildings. So if we don't have... It's the scope of responsibility. Uh, well, then you should spell out that somebody's job is going to be checking up and looking at. I go when the rain falls, I go into the boiler room to make sure the sump pump's working. It, 
It's got to be someone's job, and it shouldn't be the town manager's job. The town manager can uh, delegate. delegate to other employees of the town. And you know what? Phil said to me, and we talked about it many times, he said, my department heads do the job. The problem is his job is so big, and whoever's sitting up there is so big, that it's this building will not, there, there's not time or energy for, for that person to be checking on the boilers, checking on the compressors that failed, checking on when we had to deal with the building going this way and that way, and you know, it rained brick on to our $5,000 um, sound system. It, I, hate, I, I just, I appeal to you to be thoughtful in this opportunity that you have to make sure that there is ample bandwidth for somebody, and maybe it's not a full-time position, but somebody that is looking and has a punch list for every public building. Well, that's a good suggestion to bring up when we have a town manager, a new town, a full-time town manager, and perhaps working together, we can figure out how to use the current existing town employees to do that job better than it's currently, than it's been done in the past. But it's not part of the job description to get into what you're talking about now, okay? Okay, so. Yes, Beth. Have you named the 10 people? We are in the process. Okay. That will be public yeah, at some point. That will be totally public. Great. That will be totally public. Um, absolutely. Some are, some are we're, you know, the trustees are working on the village side of that tonight. So, um, if, if, they, if we're complete on that, that's that's sort of the schedule of the timeline. Are there any questions about that timeline? Um, I think it's, it makes sense. Thank you, Alita. Thank you, Alita. Um, if not, other business? Oh, uh, wait, Beth, you have one more question on I, the timeline? I, not about, I, I have it if you're going to other business. I have just okay. a positive comment to make. Um, oh. That I want everyone here. I have a question. Yeah. Um, possible start date, that seems, um, we need to allow enough time for a potential new employee to leave their current place of business with um i said it was just being optimistic I okay yeah, all right that's, that's, I'm that's done. Really but, I'm right. Right. but i understand yeah. you're right oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 we can't expect yeah. somebody to yeah. give two weeks notice and yeah. no this isn't um, a two week notice employee that's no. going to be that's taking right. this job that's no. right. it's just that that's the possibility that's I think it's just be, uh, Frank, right? You said that earlier. This is just Very utterly optimistic. Great. Yeah. I listen. Thank you. I have no other <laughs> questions. All right. Uh, new business. Okay. Other business. Oh, wait. There, there, there is a, something with this. Ward Goodenough is no longer on this board. <laughs> and um, I'm by oh, my I didn't goodness. even get that designation. <laughs> oh, my God. Just saying. Yeah, um, yeah that's. Well, that's, look at that. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice how they listed that. You're right. The only thing you read was his name. Yeah. No, I read her name. Well, I actually read Ward's name. Well, it wasn't even me. I didn't even read it. It wasn't even me. Did Jeff Collins still at you? Hard to say. Now. I just wanted to say that I don't know, and I apologize for not knowing the woman's name, who the town hired to do work around the village. She's awesome. She is amazing. Oh, she gets you should, she, I, like we all speak with her and yeah. Yeah. tell her how wonderful Mary, she right? is. Mary. 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 Yes. She's Mary. awesome. She's yeah. doing, she's doing rack breaking work. I don't know she's, how old she's she is. Sweeping. She's sweeping. She she's doing, doing things that need to be done. And she's got and a she's great wonderful. Idea. She's working well with the public. She's got a good eye for what needs to be done. Yeah. She really she does. She's in the, uh, so thank around you. the trees today. Sure. Yes. Yes. Don't let item under other business that wow. I want to bring I I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know what we're talking about either. We don't know what to do. Oh, well, she's, she has done a tremendous job weed whacking. Uh, Putting down mulch. When was she hired? She's put down vinegar, vinegar in the cracks of the sidewalks to kill weeds. David actually hired her about the second day he was here. And she has been working. Support budget. 
She's coming out of the I'm village's budget. budget. Yeah, she's coming out of Butch's private funds. Actually, I think. No, but seriously, she's from but she's <laughs> no. I don't know where Mary's from. Where is the money we're paying her coming from? Coming from Ken's budget. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming out of the highway budget. Highway budget. Highway budget. Highway Huge budget. difference. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it looks really awesome. Nice. There's no weeds on any of the sidewalks no. that I've seen. So let's move That's along. Um, and she goes out there and sweeps. Cool. So, many so can, you know, in the, in the general thing of keeping yeah, us informed, it would be really nice to know these things. <laughs> well, well, I was just happy it was happening. Maybe if we knew about it, it would get in the way. It's happening. It's working great. <laughs> well, some people did. When we yeah, hired. I, I talked to her all the time. If you haven't yeah. noticed it being down, down she's really done. Yep, it yeah. looks great. And if you see her down there, I'm glad he did it. And Too many cooks spoil the pot. It got done, and it looks great. And, and I've, I've heard so many comments from visitors to this town about the, the beauty lately, and including the, the flower pots. It's a silver lining to something that didn't work out the way we anticipated. However, it is a silver lining. They love it. They are absolutely beautiful, and the, and the people who visit here are noticing it and uh, thinking highly of us. And so, so I would think this would be something that we would have in a manager's report or update? That yes, that we Maybe. I want to say one other thing on other business, so I don't know if others have something, but I, I had a co phone conversation with Frank, uh, Frank McLean today, the attorney who's looking into short-term rental. Uh, he, Joe. 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 I mean, Joe. That's Frank. I am looking at Frank. I meant Joe. Not me. Joseph McLean. You're doing <laughs> And he's going to have a draft ready for next trustees meeting of a short-term rental ordinance and I asked him has he done any more work on the town side of things Joe you, know, you asked me about this and I have this conversation just happened today and he said he is of the opinion that the town charter does not support an ordinance and that the town is best uh, uh, to make their plans to work through a zoning um, uh, as, it, as is currently the case. Well, I was under the impression that the, the select board may be able to make, uh, ask, actually this is a, a VLCT question, how difficult it would be to make change to allow an ordinance to be written. It would have to because change the charter, town charter. But I didn't have a charter. Town doesn't have a charter. Well, it doesn't have a one. Okay. Town operates under state statute. Yeah. So, so I think it's worth investigating only because we have, in terms of writing the zoning regulations, um, it's just the <coughs> enforcement piece is very difficult to get right. And the, what you're doing with the ordinances is, is just such an easy way to, to work around that issue. Just, that so so you, you know, the select board is what, you know, should, should speak to them, have them tell us the same thing you told me, right. or in, it's investigated further. Uh, right. But right now, that was his, his and, opinion. So yeah. my, my feeling is that you know we can, the select board can do it by writing it into the regulations and then potentially have to take people to court, which is extremely expensive, or to proactively look into it to not have to do that, because an ordinance is just you know it's just a ticket, it's a civil a civil right. He writing. just says it's, it can't be done. But right, I know, but what I'm saying is that it's worth to me. It seems like it would be worth investigating if you want to be able to enforce these regulations to figure out a way to do it that is, is not going to have to take <coughs> you have to take people to court. So shall we ask BLC that question because we we wondered whether the dangerous buildings ordinance that we wrote is in a similar limbo land, Absolutely. and VLCT um, advised us on that one. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, this is just one attorney. This is his field, but this is just one attorney's opinion. So, you know, maybe there's another way around it that he's not aware of. But anyway, that's an update on where the village is going with it, because we're clear that we can do an ordinance. Right. I'm, I'm still confused about why we can do it and they can't. Well, our charter says, the charter oh, for the village the going back the to the early 1800s says, says that we can regulate the use of buildings. And that gives pretty <coughs> broad power to, to say that short-term rentals fit under that head. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, anyway, any other business? 
So can we conclude that one by you say by perhaps asking Frank to contact the DLCT about that for the town? I made a note. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn this. The, uh, so moved. Second. The village. That's what you said. So. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I entertain a motion to adjourn. I make that motion to motion adjourn the select board portion Second. of the meeting. Uh, Second. Seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your time. Okay. Let's get going. Yeah, let's get on. All right. I'd like to call to order the uh, Town of Woodstock Board of Village Trustees meeting of September 10th, 2019 at 716. And we'll start with any citizens' comments, if there are any. And hearing none, we'll go to, uh, and there are no additions and deletions that post an agenda. Uh, so we'll go to requests for permits. Uh, the use of the sidewalk, Woodstock Area Chamber, marketing, production of 2021 brochures, Beth. Right. Um, they um, not Discover America. Destination, Destination America, America um, called in and asked about being able to use uh, some part of the sidewalk and the downtown area for their 2021 brochure, which I think is a tour operator's brochure, um, from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. on October 4th. And they they did submit their certificate of insurance and I forwarded it to Beth. Mm -hmm. Correct. And um well, you don't know where their location is gonna be at uh, No. So I is don't is one cameraman with an assistant, something like that. Will they need parking spaces? Um at seven o'clock it shouldn't be a problem. They may park park behind the building. Yeah. I can suggest that to them behind the pharmacy and um, I yeah but it is October 1st it is so it's a busy time it is a busy time but uh, yeah yeah I don't see a problem if, if you unless you tell this is just a film crew this is a photo crew not a yet film, film. You're right, cameras not, cameras, not video. Okay. I don't think video. Well, <laughs> it can be, it can be both nowadays. Uh, yeah, it I know. Matter. But is it online video stuff? Right, I have looked at their, their um, and their, site. Yeah. It's very, it's quite lovely. I think they can't do wrong in Woodstock, for Woodstock. If there's any way we can get an update of where it's going to be, sure, that would be wonderful. Maybe like a week ahead of time. But I make a motion to allow the. I think it's going to be like every the market in the downtown central and Elm. No, central well, they, she said that they said they were going to set up on in like one yeah, particular Beth, can you area. Just have them yeah, I've give you more information on how many people are involved and what their yeah. actual plan is, and and let us let us know. But yeah. Harry has made that, a motion to accept. With that proviso that you will let us know before that date. Yes, yes that was what I did. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. Thank you, Beth. Uh, moving on, we have a... Yes, oh, Beth. I should have I should have done... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I should have done a quick um, pub, public discussion. You all know that the Naked Table and WGBH will be here yeah. on Sunday. Um, they are uh, staying for the day. They need four parking spaces on the green um, that they've asked for. Well, but Sunday, it, there's no right. It's free parking. Free parking anyway, so that's not a problem. Is there any way we can call them off? To yeah, if you, need, you want some, I can have the midnight. Should would you send me an email? Sure. I'll have the midnight officer coming off those spaces. Should be a really nice event. Uh, and those spaces should be furthest, uh, you know. I'm yeah. thinking, right, right, do you think you want them on the covered bridge side of the street, or would you want them just directly across from the intersection of Mountain Avenue on the green? I would just, I would kind of put them back like this way. Yeah, put them towards the end of the green. Put them toward the, the end, end of the green. The green. That's how you're going to be doing most of the work anyway, right? It's just their vehicles. It's not right. Okay. 
We'll cone off the last four spaces on the west end of the green. <laughs> And, it, and Beth, you're right. Uh, besides what you just said, the public should know that at three o'clock on that day, at that event, right, three fifteen. Th oh, exactly. It's, oh, it's now three fifteen. It's at three fifteen. That we will be planting a tree, uh, in mem a memorial tree for Phil Swanson, um, and uh, all those uh, in the in the town who loved Phil, which is just about everybody. You please please come and and honor him in that way on uh, this coming Sunday at 315. Thank you. All right. Uh, what time is GBH coming here? I don't know in the morning. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't let you know, but I, if you send me an email, <coughs> I could let you know. All right, moving along. Uh, Police Chief Support, Chief Blish. <coughs> so I'll start off with meters uh, tonight. Uh, revenue for August of 2019 was $15,603, mm -hmm. which was just a couple hundred dollars more than 2018, which was 15438 holding steady. Meter usage was a couple percentages higher this year than uh, th at this time last year. I do have one question concerning parking and meters. There is where the saddle shop is now, that first uh, space just west of the <coughs> post office on the side of the handicap parking. Yeah, but it still has a meter on it as well. Um, and if we're going to enforce that handicap spot, it would need to be referenced in the ordinance index, which I don't think it is. How did that come about? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. I have no nothing. I do nothing about it. It suddenly appeared, and I never heard exactly. I knew nothing about it. I don't know where it came from. I asked Ken about it, and he told me he had Phil had told him to put it there. Um, we, we, uh, he Phil had never brought it up to us. So, I don't know if it's, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps we should just take it down. We can, you'd have to paint over it. And there is, that's the other thing is we have to properly post it with not only the, the painted pavement part, but the actual handicap sign as well to make it an official space. Um, and it also, so right now that it's kind of a gray area, people are parking there because there's a meter, but they're also wondering, well, you know, if it's, it's a handicapped spot, we why is it away the meter and you'd be the losing the oh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what, first of all, is there, have you received complaints? Do we have, do we need that as an added handicap space? I never That's received never a complaint about it and I don't know where it came about. I thought, that's why tonight I wanted to ask you about it. But if you didn't know anything about no, it, then I... No, board has never dealt, never been... Uh, but it would need to be, again, if you, if, if you did come forward with it, it would need to be, be added in the uh, appendix of the ordinance in order for us to enforce it. And it would, like I said, need to be properly signed. I would and the meter would have well, to be I don't, removed. I don't before you get rid of it, though, I think that Phil probably did it for a reason, and you probably need to look into why. That's what I was thinking uh, myself. Who would you ask? Ken. Ken. I'd ask Ken, and he said he was just told to do it. Without so, do you, you have anything about it now? I do know something about it. Oh. Um, it used to be that if you pulled into the like the post office, that little alleyway there, the first right on the right hand side used to be like kind of a yeah, handicap spot. Mm -hmm. But because of the um, trucks that are delivering now, that is no longer a spot. So anybody that is handicapped and needs to get their mail or anything like that. There is no place for them to park now. So is maybe the post office would so not Maybe they requested it. I, and I'm then, wondering and if that's you, the can you, case. Can you find out? I will, and get now back that I have this tidbit yeah. of information, let me, I'll make contact with the, the post, post, post office. Post and, office. And, yep. and let's find out. I'll get back to you next week. And then week. maybe we can make a decision. In the, in the meantime. Maybe Ken has an email that there, there correspondence with Phil that I'll might have out. led to that. Is there I'll a federal requirement out. for a handicap spot? No. Oh, if there was, it would have been invented. I mean, technically, a handicapped person can park in any spot. Yes. But if there was a designated or a quasi-designated spot in the post office driveway that they've since done away with, then the handicapped mm -hmm. folks may want their very own spot. Because even though they can park anywhere, obviously somebody's going to park there in a metered spot, and they may not have access to that parking close to the post office. All right, so if you but can find out yep. and then get back to it. And there's no, no handicap parking on that decision. side of the road. Yeah, so I, 
I just wanted to touch base with you Thank to you. make sure if, if you had to do some back background too. Yeah. So Thank you. I'll right, but also those spots don't have anything more than what fifteen minutes on them. No, not that much. I'm, I'm, but I'm saying that it's it, it's not like there isn't heavy turnover on those spots right in front of the post office where somebody was handicapped. They're not waiting more than 15 minutes before someone comes out. That's true, too. So let's have that in the discussion. I'm not saying that we should get rid of the handicap spot that's been no, added. I'm just saying that it's, no, you know, there's a heavy turnover. It's not like it's going to be four hours before someone comes line. out. Uh, but right now it's metered and handicapped, so oh, there's some thank confusion. You. There's about yeah. the rear load. You got to think about rear load handicap. Like if somebody's in a wheelchair and they have to have like a handicap spot, there's a reason they're wider. I understand that. So I said I'm but not I'm saying, saying that I'm against yeah. the the handicap spot. I'm just saying that if we're talking about how long somebody would have to wait or they have to go find a spot, they really don't have to. Okay. Let's have now, this discussion I, after we have some more information. Because it's meter and handicap mark, would it be okay if I bagged the meter until I find out what's going on? What the that bottom story is? Yeah, I think it, so. Yeah, yeah, but then, I, I'll, I'll be quick about it. So it's yeah, let's be quick bag. about. Yeah, that's not wait. To, oh, no, 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 I'll talk to the next meeting. Like, no, no. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I don't want to wait till the next meeting. Uh, okay. To. Well, we're going to meet next week anyway. We're going to have a, a joint. We're going to have a, a meeting. Maybe we can bring this up. I'll, bring, I'll be next here because I have, to, I have to present to the select board. Okay. For the great. Let's, let's do it. So I'll, I can, I'll be here next week. That'd be great. Okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. Um, August was busy for us in, in arrests. We had six arrests, uh, restraining order, a couple of uh, DUIs, a couple of driving license suspended, a couple warrants. And we also had the Governor's Highway Safety Program, their Labor Day campaign was successful. Uh, the worked officers worked an additional 59 and a half hours uh, during that campaign. They stopped 80 vehicles and they issued 53 tickets, which I wanted to add 29 of those were cell phone tickets. And, wow. and then officers worked an additional 37 hours last month as part of the Highway Safety Campaign. And, um, they stopped an additional, or wrote an additional 29 tickets, but 20 of those, 29 additional tickets, were cell phone tickets. Well. The reason I bring this up uh, is because I would suggest, um, in terms of for heightened public safety in Woodstock, that we may consider having a mirror ordinance to the state statute, much like we do the stop signs, uh, the left turn, so that uh, if we were to issue a ticket, it would be for village ordinance violation and it would probably, I think, be a good thing. Oh. So, uh, can you bring us a copy of that? Can, can we have a copy of the ordinance you're talking about the state? What I'll do is I'll draft uh, an ordinance. Draft an ordinance. It'll be, it, and it would go in under the tra uh, Title Eight and the <coughs> village ordinances. It would just probably, we can find, maybe find a hole somewhere in the numbering system, and uh, I'll bring it forward to you. Okay. And so well, you can look at I'm sorry, maybe I missed it. What's the point of doing this? So that we can, can we can uh, make the fines, uh, make it more difficult for people to make them more conscious to not be texting in particular. Like an increased uh, fine? It would be a fine that would yeah. that would accrue to, to Woodstock instead of just going to the state, which currently is the case. Oh, well, okay. I think that's a good idea. We, we're riding, we are enforcing the cell phone um, with a handheld electronic <coughs> device uh, statute. We are enforcing it, so we, we probably should take advantage of that. And that's so Thank unfair. You. That's if somebody's even like just like this. Sorry. Not only am touching. So there's, there's two yeah. parts to the statute. Yeah. Or uh, one is obviously just using it, holding it in your hand, looking at it. Right, it's bad. That's, that's a violation, as well as talking is a violation. Okay. The big one is the texting. So the, the, just the talking on it or holding it is uh, two points, uh, the, but the texting is five points oh, and oh a much wow. bigger fine. Technically, you're not even allowed to touch your phone at all. And yeah, and you can see that like in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's, uh, I don't know if it's education or what, I think everybody around us in neighboring states, they have the same thing, but people are just, they gotta talk. <laughs> Okay. All right, <laughs> and uh, so we worked the uh, with Porsche Club of America this past week while, while they were in town and um, assisted them with some traffic control for their tours. 
We didn't have any issues with the taste of Woodstock. Beth had a lampshade on her head, but we took care of that. <laughs> on, on the stage. But oh, just on the stage. Um, open position that we still have. We s haven't received any certified applications for that position. I, I think I need to consider opening it up to non-certified people, but that would, of course, require us to send that person to the academy. With the salary savings we're experiencing so far this year, because we've been able to you know, juggle some, some shifts around, um, we could probably do that without a, a big impact to the, to the budget. I mean, it, might, it would be some, but if we had to, the next academy would be in February. Uh, so we would. Could you let us know what that impact would be? Yeah, yeah I can do that. I'll just. It would be our projection, yeah. obviously. Um, would their initial position. salary be lower in the beginning? It would be. Anyway yeah, the training. The, the training is. The expensive, regardless. That that is that would, right? That is an offset. So it's kind of a. A juggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some in a, in a it's sense. Not a lot, but no. Right. It's no. It would be a, no. a still cost. be an expense. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll get that information Thank for you because we really we should be thinking about it. If yeah. I have with February coming up, and I have to have everything in by December for paperwork wise, which would mean I'd have to put the notice out, do the hiring, get the applications, close it. Right. Just the process, you know. Right. Right. And last but not least. School, school's out, school's in session, so caution all the motors, please slow down, especially in the school zones and, and around the school buses. My last PSA of the night. I had one question about the drop-off zone that you had spoke about on our, at our last meeting. I hadn't seen that happening. I, wondered, I spoke to, on? I did, I spoke to Maggie about, uh, principal about it, and, and I let her know that you had approved it, and I told her that uh, as soon as she wanted to get the word out, let me know, and I also would need to get some signs. That said, drop off zone, and as soon as those are those are in, then we'll, we'll kick it off. Okay. I, I was hoping that maybe it would work because they had the staff member out front that was really kind of keeping yeah. things moving. So I don't know if the impact, if they still needed it or not. But once I yeah. got the, what, what's your you're there in the morning too? I mean, I walk as much as I can, but in the winter time. Yeah, yeah in the winter traffic. that's true. Winter's coming up, so that would that's when it, traffic. That's when it gets really really hard. Really uh, I just drive off and drive away. I've never had an issue over there. All right, but that's the word. Is uh, we're working on it. Yeah. getting the signs, no, and then no, once we do that, we can cars post it. And she's yeah. going to put it out in the school newsletter yeah. to let folks know they can start using it as a drop off. Great. Yep. Cool. Great. Is that it? Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. All uh, right. Next up, we have the the financial report. Um, our interim manager is no longer here. He did answer some questions that Anna and I had seen um, on the report, and he's going to continue to. For instance, the uh, if you looked at the year-to-date expenditures under yes. trustees, that was misplaced at five thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars. Should be under office administration, um, and. Um, uh, it has to do with uh, some of the search committee, uh, uh, the search uh, uh, issues that we're dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. And also... Um, what do you mean search issues? Well, pay, you know, expenses related to the search. The LCT, lawyers. Um, and also Frank, his list is in there. Some of his pay mm -hmm. is actually... Uh, in there because he is not an employee. Um, remember, he's a consultant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's that. It's under th in that manner that he is our interim uh, <coughs> manager as a consultant. The other thing that's questionable on here um, is uh, executive, and that that number, which for two months into the fiscal year seems kind of high, is because that includes uh, payout payout uh, figures involving Phil. Mm -hmm. Uh, village share. So other than that, there's not much uh, that I saw as a question on, on the financial report. Um, <coughs> and he's going to give answers to uh, uh, for us on the two issues I brought up in <coughs> terms of it making sense. Is that a single payout? How is that structured? I'm just curious. Is that are we going to exceed our budget on that line item because of that? Or? No, well, that's a single payout. Okay. Michael leaves me well. 
Um, yeah. Okay, so next is the resolution of the siding authority. Uh, there, and you all see that, a copy of that in your, uh, that was handed out to you. We'll be signing off on that at the end uh, of the evening. Uh, and it, it details that uh, Frank has uh, authority to act on our behalf and, uh, uh, and have that signing authority. Uh, so, we'll move. Excuse me? Do you need a motion? Yes. Uh, do we need a motion or just uh, do yeah, we okay. just sign it? Adopted by the following vote. Oh, it does. Okay. Well, then mm -hmm. I'd entertain a motion. <laughs> I move to approve. Second. Uh, any any discussion on the resolution of signing authority for Frank Hill? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Other business? Does anyone have any other business to bring up before we move on the agenda? Hearing none, then uh, we are going to uh, move into uh, an executive session at this time. So, we're concerning appointments. And so, uh, I have to ask everyone to leave. I'm sorry, but that's where we are uh, in the agenda. Thank you for being here. For the search committee? Yes, it's dealing with that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Brewer, make a motion. Uh, motion to go into executive session. Motion to go into executive session. Second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. I'm going to wait until after because I want to.